And where are we recording today's episode of The Anthony Show? Ooh. Freedom Zen Garden. We got a winner. Whoa. I'm going to have to get a little further away. There we go. Freedom, you've been asking questions and I've got answers. I have notes. First question comes from a Freedom partner dealing with our launch of WATH or We Are The Hits. By the way, if you haven't done that yet, you should probably check that out in the dashboard. The question is, what is a synchronization license and why do I need one? As covered in a previous video, which you should probably check out on screen right now, a synchronization license gives you the rights to synchronize audio and visual elements on screen for an audience. This can be used in such things as videos, films, video games, television, etc. That's primarily what We Are The Hits, or WAF, does in your Freedom Dashboard. It gives you the ability to obtain a synchronization license for here on YouTube. And for those of you who are curious, if you obtained your music through any of the Freedom offerings such as Epidemic Sound, Audio Microbe, or Position Music, for example, a synchronization license comes as standard. Next question. What's the difference between purchasing and licensing a song? When you purchase a song from iTunes or Amazon, CDs, etc., truth is you are buying a license. However, you're getting a physical copy of it sometimes. However, you only have it for personal listening. You can listen to it on whatever devices you'd like, but again, only for personal use. However, if you'd like to use that song in an audiovisual production, it's going to take a different kind of licensing. On to question number three. So let's say that you've licensed a song. Can you use that song in more than one production? Normally, no. However, if you were provided that music through any of the Freedom resources, then yes, because you are granted that license perpetually. If you're licensing music from a certain source, you should probably check the rules and regulations on where you're licensing that from and the license itself. Next question. Can I use multiple songs in one project? If you've gotten your music from a freedom provided source, such as Position Music, Epidemic Sound, or Audio Micro, then yes! Note that sometimes this does kind of confuse things, so it's really best to not do it unless you just have a killer idea or some way to really leverage things and get the most out of everything. Also, if you're not getting this stuff from a freedom provided source, then you may want to check with their licensing and see what they allow. Next question. When I uploaded my video to YouTube, I received a third party matched content notice. What does that mean? Well, overly dramatic me. The best canned response I can give you is that YouTube uses a system called Content ID to fingerprint music and allow the owners of the music to track and monetize uh, or monetize the views of their music on YouTube. When YouTube recognizes a song that is being used in a video, it alerts the uploader that the video contains music owned by a third party. Third party means not by YouTube, not by the uploader, but a third person. Wouldn't it be kind of cool if there were actually parties? That does not mean that you're receiving a copyright infringement notice or that a strike may be placed on your channel. It also won't cause your YouTube video to be taken down. It does, however, restrict you from monetizing the video yourself on YouTube. Next question. Do I have to license my music individually for YouTube videos? Well, that kind of depends on where you get your music from. If you get your music from somewhere that Freedom has made available to you, then probably not. This is because there are blanket deals with companies like Audio Micro, Position Music, and Epidemic Sound. Some exceptions may apply, such as with Position Music, where Freedom partners have access to things within the Freedom category in position music. However, things outside of that may need to be licensed externally. If you're getting your music from outside of a freedom provided source, you're going to want to check with their licensing. What are the advantages of stock music? Stock music is specifically written and recorded for use with audiovisual productions in mind, so it covers a wide array or variety of uses, and it's really versatile in that way. And it's also licensed in a way that allows many people to use it and for everyone to be able to have something that they can use. Last but not least, what is the public domain? Oh, okay. First off, I need to say this. this is not just a music thing. This is uh, like a copyright thing in general. And 
I, for the rest of the video, kind of assumed that you knew that I wasn't a copyright attorney, but here I need to specifically state that I'm not, and that this is based off of my personal experience and research, and that you should do your own. Also, I'm going to be trying to read from a script, so uh, if this sounds kind of robotic, that's why. From the time a piece of music is created, it's protected by copyright. Once a piece of music has existed beyond the copyright protection period, that piece of music is considered to be in the public domain. The international laws governing copyright by Berne Convention and the Universal Copyright Convention. Under the Berne Convention, copyright extends for the life of the composer plus a minimum of 50 years following his or her death. Most of the world's industrial countries have signed the Berne Convention and comply with it, although all countries have their own copyright laws which may extend the copyright period for an additional number of years. In fact, many countries have extended this copyright term to a period of 75 years following the death of the composer. If you are intending to use a piece of music that is public domain, make sure that you check copyright laws in the countries where the production will be used to make sure that your use conforms with the laws in those countries. Wow! That is a lot of information. Uh, I hope that this video has been helpful for you. If it has, let us know in the comment section down below. Till next time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and do all those things that make me love my job. Also, be awesome to yourself and amazing to each other. <sighs> I am not taking up a lot of the frame here. I probably should have fixed that before I started recording. Gosh darn it. So during the end card here, I just wanted to point out this is our development staff all huddled over something trying to solve some really complex problems with big numbers. Or big data. Or, I don't know. They're smarter than I am. Bye.